Myers does a show called Tom Myers versus the rest of the world. And it's really good stuff. He writes a monologue for every single episode. You know, I hate this guy. And it's great, Andy, because he talks about what's going on in politics here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Something that Andy follows very closely. (laughs) So he understands all the players that are involved in this. And now, Andy, I, I was being facetious. You obviously don't follow politics all that closely. I don't blame you for that. It's a waste of everybody's time. But you do know that our current president is old, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, you know that. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's all I know about so politics. Joe, Joe Biden is an old guy. And he kind of displays he's an old guy from time to time. So this is back on November 30th, right after the Thanksgiving break, because that's the most recent episode of this. And uh, we got some really good Biden is old jokes to start the show off. Hello, and welcome to Tom Myers versus the rest of the world. Joe Biden celebrated his 81st birthday. He made several jokes about his age. Of course, he had to clean them up a bit for the White House press score. So as a result, he didn't tell dad jokes, but great granddad jokes. And that's the only dad joke I'm telling this whole season, I promise. <laughs> that was a meta dad joke because Tom declared that that was a dad joke about a dad joke. You don't seem impressed. It was horrible. You don't look as impressed as you should be. Honestly, for Tom Myers, that was pretty good. Oh, I God. Really? Say. Oh, man. I mean, I'm, not, the most I'm, not, giving, I'm not giving I'm not giving him any <laughs> oxygen for anything that he does. But, I mean, at least I got it. Okay. In that speech, I remember when this happened because this made big news, big headlines around the world. I mean, obviously, we have a war going on in Europe. There's another one in the Middle East. And the big news was... Biden didn't know the difference between Britney Spears and Taylor Swift. He commented about a concert down in Brazil and he said, Britney, (laughs) it's Britney, bitch. I think it's what he said. And everyone's like, well, no, it was a Taylor Swift concert where someone died waiting in line for the. But anyway, Tom Myers got a great joke for this. Biden's age became a bit of an issue online when during the annual Thanksgiving turkey pardoning, he confused Britney Spears with Taylor Swift. I'm only 40, but I find that easy to do as I've masturbated to both. (laughs) I figure that makes up for the one dad joke that I'll do all season. (laughs) Call back. So you confuse girls you jerk off to easily? Is that a thing? Well, he doesn't get laid. He jerks off to everybody. Yeah, I know. That's, um, That's why I'm like, I don't even get why that's. All right. That's yeah. exactly why he confuses Britney with Carl. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I get it, I guess. All right, let's 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 talk about Argentina just elected a libertarian president, which obviously Tom refers to as far right. And uh, this is his joke for that. Argentina elected Javier Malay, a far right candidate, as its president. If you've never seen Javier Malay and you want to know what he looks like, just imagine Johnny Cash and Ted Nugent had a baby. And then laced its formula with PCP. (laughs) Sounds pretty cool. (laughs) All right. You guys following that? So we got we got Johnny Cash (laughs) and Ted Nugent, and they lace the formula with PCP. This is what looks like the dude from the match game with with the gay guy from the what's that guy's name? (laughs) I don't know about that. Uh, why can I never think of his name? I watch the match Not game Paul Lynn, all the, the time. Other, I know it's, it's the, the other one. Name. That's who that looks like. So, yeah. I'm I, moving to Argentina. That's like the dumbest joke, too. You're like, this guy looks like this guy and that guy if they were doing this thing. Yeah. You could do that for anything, anytime. And it's never funny, especially this time. It did not work at all. All right. Let's get into more ejaculation jokes. That's, Thank you. That's what we all want to hear. That's why we come to Tom Myers. Malay once described himself as a tantric sex instructor who once went three months without ejaculating. That's nothing. This country can do better. If you believe Stormy Daniels, Trump hasn't ejaculated since conceiving Barron. (laughs) And even then, a turkey baster was involved. (laughs) For legal reasons, I have to say that's not true to the best of my knowledge. (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha ha. I'm just glad the effect is back. Oh, you so funny. Stormy Daniels. <laughs> She'll even tell you she will. They're after me lucky charms. So that last thing wasn't even a joke. And these people are so trained to just laugh at everything that Tom says. Yeah. And just for legal reasons, I have to say that I don't know if that's true. <laughs> what? 
that might have been a joke. I, maybe it was. Maybe that was a joke, and I just don't get Tom's sense of humor. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm the only one who's not getting all these hilarious All this time, lines. it's just that you don't get I'm it. I'm the idiot, obviously. Everybody else is digging this Tom Myers train. That's... Now, around this time, there was that car at the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls that they the accelerator wouldn't stop going. They couldn't hit the brakes for whatever reason. This car just went flying Dukes of Hazard style into a building and exploded. I mean, aside from people dying, it was very cool. And uh, Tom has a joke about that. A car exploded on the Rainbow Bridge at the Canadian border near Niagara Falls. It's almost as if someone said they wanted to go over the falls in a barrel and someone else said, here, hold my Molson's and watch this. <laughs> Get it? So I, you didn't laugh, but I'll explain it to you because it always makes it funnier. Um, Molson is a style of beer they brew in Canada. Called Molson Canadian, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you do know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised you weren't laughing then because, you know, typically when you want to one-up someone, you go, hey, hold my beer. Yeah. And then you one-up them. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Come on in, buddy. Our buddy uh, Circus Midget's in town and is visiting us. You can sit where Welcome. producer Chris normally sits when you get a chance and hang out, find some headphones. We're just in the middle of a Tom Myers oh, segment right now. Lucky you. Yeah, so get, get some cans on. Now- when that was story first came out, it was originally reported that there could have been a terrorist plot. Yeah. You remember that? Yes. They go, I, a car blew up on the Rainbow Bridge. They shut down all the border crossings. We didn't know what was going on. Yes. I, I instantly was like, "There's this is the worst planned terrorist attack ever. Yeah. What you do is detonate it in the middle of the bridge. Yeah. And then you start sh shooting people <laughs> on the bridge. You don't detonate it. Right. Off to the side yeah. before you even get on the bridge. It was clearly so you, you saw right through this whole thing. You went, "This, this is not the terrorist." This I is know. not what I my plan was at all. <laughs> I saw right. what CNN was trying to tell me. Well, <laughs> according to Tom Myers, Fox was the one who was sharing this bogus news. And I want you to hear the joke he came up with for this. Listen for the word economy. I wish he oh, would have shoved a few <laughs> more words into this one. It would have made it way funnier. Investigators said there was no sign of terrorism, but that, of course, didn't stop Fox from trying to push the theory. It boggles my mind how they can even report these kinds of things with a straight face. Canada is becoming a haven for terrorism. It starts with us importing Alex Trebek, Jim Carrey, and the kids in the hall. That's how they soften us up. Now they're going after our rainbow bridge. Tomorrow it's the duty free. I guess that's the joke because he stopped talking. <laughs> I mean, any of that could have been the end of the punchline right there. Obviously, it would have been a, a terrorist attack on the LGBTQ community because it was the Rainbow, the Bridge. Rainbow Bridge. Right. I see what you did there. Right. All of the news, <laughs> the 24 hour news cycle is they're all running to scoop each other, even yes. if their facts are completely off base. Correct. Yes. But uh, pretty good stuff, though, from Tom Myers. He mentioned, um, you know, Canada's been working on this. For decades, <laughs> all those Canadians, yeah, Coming evil to, can't you know be trusted. That? Do you guys know Alex Trebek's Canadian? Pretty good stuff, huh? Oh man, you I know wish you would have named a few more Justin examples. Justin Trudeau is yeah. Fidel Castro's son. I did, I did know that actually. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> You're the one that told me that. Are you guys ready for the? Are you guys ready for the most obvious joke ever? I bet you are. Yes. The Rolling Stones announced they will tour the U.S. next year and that the tour will be sponsored by AARP. In other news, Chris D'Elia will go on a tour next year and it will be sponsored by the National Sexual Assault Hotline. <laughs> 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 Get it? Because Chris D'Elia has been accused of. Yeah. Okay. Moving NAMBLA. <laughs> sponsored by NAMBLA. It's easier to say. Yeah. Tom. Would have been, been a better punchline probably. A little punchier. Been a way to, to, to go with that. Him. Love Tom. He's great. What what I love about Tom <laughs> <Get> is that, <laughs> what I love about Tom Myers is when you do a monologue, you end on your strongest joke, you get the applause going, and then all right, we're moving on to the next thing. I'm gonna go sit behind my desk and we'll do a wacky stunt. No. Tom decides to use the worst joke he has, it's the biggest stinker, and then <laughs> transition into the show. The new Tesla truck is going to be bulletproof. This is a security measure due in part that someone may see Elon Musk driving one. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, on with the show. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Heisen and Gina Brown. Oh, yay, hey, Jeff Heisen. Hey, Welcome back. 
Yeah, that's the other thing, too. I'm finally realizing what he's doing wrong with these introductions. He's treating it like it's a stand-up show. So he's going, all right, and now bring it up next. We got Jeff Heisen. You're like, there's no audience here. It's just a show you're doing. <laughs> but yeah. I just heard clapping and applause. They're, went, they're applauding themselves. Yay. They're applauding yeah. themselves. Yay. Everybody, Lucy Type Box, everyone. Yay. Let's, <laughs> let's hear it. I liked it. I liked it. Get a load of those cans. Yeah. Oh, so Jeff comes in, and he takes a giant swig. He's like, okay, uh, not my turn to talk. I got something for Sweet. us. And this is, again... Just a lot of words, and he thinks it's going to land with this big punchline, and it gets nothing, and deservedly so. Well, Tom, I want to perform a public service for listeners of this podcast for the second straight year. Oh, what did I do now? Well, because undoubtedly there is a great overlap between the number of listeners between Tom Myers versus the rest of the world and HBO's The Gilded Age. (laughs) <laughs> the Gilded Age has an official podcast, which is hosted by Tom Myers. So, folks, that is not this Tom Myers. They are spelled differently, and the subject matter of these shows is different. How long you been waiting to crack out that gem? So, because there's another guy named Tom Myers, I'm, there's probably a bunch of people named Tom Myers in the world, I would imagine, who also hosts a podcast. Jeff Heisen's like, you guys won't believe this. There's another show hosted by Tom Myers. Now, different Tom Myers, even spelled differently. Great joke. Yeah. Good stuff there. Jeff, thanks for that. <laughs> There's also another age called the Gilded Age. It was all very confusing. It's all very confusing. <laughs> Jeff. All right. So Tom's talking about his family got together for Thanksgiving. And I don't know if you know this. Tom's family is white. Don't hold that against him. Tom already does. But he was very proud of them this Thanksgiving. Um, I found it uh, interesting. Um, I was getting together with my family. Uh, of course, you know, I was raised in a pretty uh, somewhat suburban area of uh, of the state of Maryland. We're like a somewhat slowly like reddening dot in the great in the great blue wave that is uh, that is the state of Maryland. But I noticed that in our large uh, family gathering that we had, uh, it was a table full of uh, white people, and not one of them had a positive thing to say about Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. So I was quite, I was quite taken aback by that. Now I'm going to make an observation. <laughs> First off, not all white people like Donald Trump. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I've met a ton of white people who don't like Donald Trump. That is a thing that exists in the world. Secondly, I can imagine that if you're in Tom Meyer's family, you don't want to bring up politics at all. Because oh, this God, asshole no. will then start talking about politics right. and fuck that noise. <laughs> you know, I can imagine Tom's just like, so anyone here voting for Trump? They're just like, no, Tom, no one's voting for Trump. Um, the weather's <laughs> nice today. Did you guys catch the ball game? Yeah, Ravens look good this year. Yeah. What do you guys think? I assume he was sitting at the kids' table. <laughs> so yeah. Do I hear you guys talk about Trump over there? No, Tom, no one's bringing up Trump. He's boring. <laughs> Let's talk Pokemon. What if that's where he got his start? Like his family, somebody in his family convinced him that he was funny and he started to, well, you know. Actually, I'm going to show you where he got his start because he's going to go back and talk about his family dynamics. And we're going to learn why Tom is such a Democrat. He is a liberal Democrat, and that's all he ever talks about. And I think this is probably why. And the weird thing is, is that my dad has been like Mr. Republican since like I've known him. Like he was like uh, Nixon, Ford, Reagan, all the way up through Romney. And then I was rebelling against his dad. Oh, yeah. it's Tom's origin. Story. See, my dad listened to classical music and opera, and I played in a punk rock band. So <laughs> I understand this. I get it. Yeah, take that. Fuck you, dad. You fuck you, dad. I vote for Clinton. <laughs> not this house. You're not. <laughs> when Trump ran for office and then during his term, when he started saying negative things about the military, my dad was a combat veteran and uh, served for uh is on and off in the service for 30 years. That's kind of what what turned him off to Trump. I don't necessarily know that my dad's progressive, but <laughs> he's, he's like me. The only thing that's uh, uh, progressing with him is, uh, is our aches and pains that we have as we get older. But Ooh. I was like, you know, dad's kind of, he's, he's softening his shell. We'll take it. We'll take it. I'm glad he worked some comedy into that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when? 
<laughs> that uh, you know, progressing joke. Oh, okay, I got it. I got it. He's not progressive, but he, we're progressively Progress. getting more oh, sore yeah. in our joints. He gets no less painful to listen to. Like, it's always the same, and I always <laughs> love it. I don't know why that is. I got one more for you. He's gonna come out with a gem of a protest joke. Now, this is before this happened, but I don't know if you guys saw this or before Christmas. I think it was Christmas Eve, maybe the day before that. The pro Palestinian protesters decided to block the entrance to O'Hara Airport or O'Hare Airport. Is it O'Hare or O'Hara? O'Hare. 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 O'Hare, yeah. I don't know why I thought O'Hara. O'Hare Airport in Chicago. And that's a dick move. That's not going to win anyone over for your cause if, like, oh, now Christmas is ruined for me and my family. Thanks, protesters. I had so much to do with Israel's response. So thank you for I fucking up my, my life. Cr- my Christmas. Thank you. Yeah, yeah great. So anyway, this is actually kind of relevant based on that just happening. In my younger days, I was quick to take to the streets and protest whenever I saw something going on that was unjust and needed to be rectified by a petition for the redress of a grievance. As I get older, though, I find it more difficult for me to engage. In fact, the last time I stopped traffic and caused a scene, it wasn't a protest. My girlfriend and I simply decided not to pull into an empty parking lot before she gave me a hand job in her open convertible. Mm. <laughs> Nobody would touch his dick. No one's ever touched his dick. That's the yeah, thing. That's a fictional girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. that's the, I, could you imagine writing that joke down and going, yeah, I'll probably say this on my next podcast. <laughs> yeah. That one worked. That one, I liked this it. This one works. I just couldn't believe where that got to. You've done it again, Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Talking is to the, himself. Is the convertible part of it even that necessary on this one? He's painting a picture. Yeah, he's painting a picture of his dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need to know about that. Who are these podcasts?